come on. Give the Lord a hand offer to praise one more time. Amen. Praise God. You look great today. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Wow. Hey, this is a great day. This is a great week. Amen. Uh, of all weeks, the week of uh, a holiday called Thanksgiving, to be in the house of the Lord and just rejoice in Him. And uh, I'm glad you're here today. It's a special day in our church. Throughout the day, there'll be some folks coming in today among us that are going to be a part of our uh, Blessing in a Box project. And we've got uh, 40 that actually registered, 40 families registered online to receive a blessing today from Church Alive in the way of a box of food, which actually is a bag. Kroger was so good to us. They just gave us Kroger bags. We've stapled them up. And uh, and then there will be ten families that will also go away and be blessed with a, a big turkey uh, as they leave today, between now and uh, today. So uh, turn around and tell somebody, hey, turkey day is coming. Amen. Turkey day is coming. I want to say a big thank you to... Uh, anyone that felt in their heart that they wanted to give toward the Blessing in the Box project, a lot, a lot of money's been turned in, and it's uh, it's all going to be met. Praise God. If the Lord still touches somebody's heart, just turn it in, and uh, we'll use it to help those that are in need. And I tell you what, this is a great time of the year to reach out and to help people that um, maybe might need just a little extra this season. Amen. I mean, that's what we're called to do, amen, to help. And we want to be helpers, amen. We want to be helpers, and that's what we plan on being. So thank you so much for that. Hey, we're glad you're here. Are you ready to worship today? Come on, are you ready to worship the Lord? I can tell by that first song, you're ready today. Amen. Well, one more time, tell somebody you come at the right place at the right time today because Jesus is here, amen. Let's worship. Of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings, who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory. The King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my life away. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nation? With truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. I sing for all that you've done for me. This is, this is amazing grace. Oh, yes, it is. This is the failing love that you would take my place, that you 
amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas, twas great that taught my heart to be, and grace my fears relieved. Oh, how precious is that grace appeared. We are my first believe my chains, my chains are Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you today. Lord, we exalt you today. God, thank you for the air that I breathe. Thank you for the eyes that I can see, the ears that I can hear today, Lord the hands that I can touch, the feet where I can go and walk and step. Thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, your grace, your power, your strength, your protecting hand today upon our hearts and upon our lives, Lord. Father, may we just take a moment today be grateful to you, Father. Lord, we have time today for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thanks. 
I think you all know this older song just comes to my heart. It says, and I will bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Come on, you know it. And all that is within me, bless Come on, Church Alive, let's ring it out today. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I'm going to bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy Come on, let's give Him some thanksgiving praise this morning. I will bless the Lord. Oh, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord, oh, my soul. you going in and I bless you coming out. I bless you in the city and I bless you in the country. I'm going to bless my Lord. I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all oh, everything. going to bless your holy Bless your holy name. Come on, let's bless him with a hand offering of praise this morning, church. I may just stretch your hands up toward the Lord right now. Just whatever's in your heart to bless him. 
Come on, bless him this morning. Bless him rocks and mountains. Bless him land and sea. Bless him hills and valleys. Bless him everything. Let everything that hath breath bless the Lord. Praise him. Praise him and bless him. Lord, let your praises continually be in his mouth. I exalt you this morning. How excellent it is. How great it is to bless your name, O oh, Most High. Let us exalt his name together. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. One day this poor man cried out and the Lord heard his call. I've got something to bless him for. Something to praise him for. Oh, he forgives all my iniquities. He heals all my diseases. He crowneth my life with loving kindness and tender mercies. He renews my strength like an eagle. Somebody ought to bless him today. Somebody ought to bless him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your holy, bless your holy, holy name. One more time, I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, oh, and all, everything, everything, Lord. I bless your holy. Bless this holy, holy, holy name. Amen, amen. Come on, that's right. And he deserves all the praise. He deserves all the glory. Woo! Fact is, God's not interested in sharing his glory with any flesh today. Did you know that? But he alone is worthy today. He alone today ought to be magnified. Wow, man, you guys are singing that. I can tell it's coming from the wells of your salvation today. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. This is a great day to worship and praise the Lord. Well, be seated, greet somebody one more time in the name of the Lord and give them a great big smile. Let them know Jesus loves them today. Amen. Jesus loves you today. Praise God. Amen. You can be seated if you can. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Our ushers are getting ready. We're going to worship the Lord. Receive him a tithe and offering and just giving all of us a chance to worship in that way. Bless you today. My goodness. I don't know about you. I'm glad I come to church already today. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is good. You know, obviously, we count our blessings and we're thankful, hopefully, as a believer, as a Christian, every day. How many knows every day is Thanksgiving Day for the child of God? Amen. But uh, we are mindful. This is a special week set aside, a day in particular where we count our blessings. And uh, I certainly count it a blessing today to worship God. Aren't you glad you could come into church and and live in a free country, in a free nation? If you want to lift your hands and worship, you can lift. If you want to lift your voice, you can do that. If you want to kneel at an altar, you can do that. Hey, folks, I tell you, I don't take any of that stuff lightly today. Amen. I don't take it for granted. These are this is part of my counting my blessings this week, and 
I certainly count my blessing to be able to give back unto the Lord. You know, God's given so much to me, and uh, I want to be faithful in giving back to him. Would you bow your heads with me today? Father, we thank you. Thank you for this incredible church that I have the honor to pastor and to minister in Sunday after Sunday. Thank you for their faithfulness today, Lord. I believe their faithfulness is a reflection of their God's faithfulness, Lord. And I thank you, God, because you are faithful in deed. You're faithful in word. You're faithful in deed. And we thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, bless the gift today. Bless the giver. Uh, Father, we pray that as every seed is sown, every gift given, every tithe that's tithed, Lord, may it come back and bless your people as outlined in your word. We know, God, that we'll never outgive you. But, God, you've, uh, you've instructed us to know how to understand it's more blessed to give than to receive. And we thank you for that blessing today. Bless your people, I pray. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you today for your giving unto the Lord. If you look at your church bulletin today and what you received one, you'll see several things on our church calendar coming up. I'm not going to take the time to uh, go over each of them, but just to highlight some things that are next on the calendar. We have no service this Wednesday night. We're foregoing our Bible study because we know that this is a time of uh, family time with you and uh, with the holiday coming up. But uh, remember uh, that we will uh, be back and preach and pray. It's been going great. Brother Kenny did a tremendous job Wednesday night. I think we ought to give the Lord another hand offering of praise for that. Tremendous word came forth. You don't want to miss out on Wednesday nights. We're having a great time. We have so many different uh, anointed, gifted men and women of God that know how to handle, deliver, and teach the Word of God. And we are a, can, can we just agree, we're a very blessed church around here. I mean, we are such a blessed church. <clears throat> I mean, I feel like sometimes we could just line up the ministry in this church and just sit at their feet. And, and learn and grow constantly. And, and they're, they're a ministry group that I'm just telling you, if I had a need, if I needed prayer, I could call on any one of those men and women. You know who I'm talking about today. And the anointing would flow. And uh, I tell you what, I believe God has strategically, I'm, I'm just going to say, God strategically placed all of us in this body as it pleases him for this purpose, for such a time as this. I'm telling you, this is a launching pad for ministry right here. Somebody help me give the Lord praise for that. And I'm so excited. So I said all that to say, come out and uh, for preach and pray when it resumes following Thanksgiving week, and you're going to be blessed. Uh, December 7th, our Women with Purpose Christmas luncheon is coming up, and you'll see details. Um, and then, of course, uh, 
our regular, some of our regular ministries, the men's ministries, December 14th. Please mark your calendar for December 15th. That's the time that we do our uh, church uh, fellowship dinner for Christmas. It's going to be on the 15th this year. It's going to be immediately following our service. And it's always a great, great time of fellowship, food, and just enjoying the presence of the Lord. So mark that down, would you? Uh, December 7th at 1 o'clock, again, as I mentioned, is the Christmas party at 1 o'clock, and it's on the back of your bulletin, and there's details about that as well. All right. Well, if you love Jesus, sing praise the Lord. Amen. The first Sunday in January, we're going to be doing a, uh, a launching of a new additional Bible class, a cell group whatever you want to label it, which will be geared toward uh, youth, toward young people. So help us spread the word. This is going to be a part of our Awakened Student Ministry in January of 2020 before our worship service. Uh, we're getting the space ready for them to meet and preparing that. And it's just going to be an awesome time. Do you know any youth? How many know that the young generation, they, they need a place and they need space to fellowship and to grow in the Lord and to study the Word of God too, Amen. And we want to we want to begin to foster that environment, that culture. Pastor Jerry's helping us with this, so uh, pray over that too as well, Amen. All right. Well, I want to say especially today we have a guest today. If I don't recognize you, I apologize. But I did want to recognize uh, one family that I know that is here visiting with us. And that's Zach and Kara uh, Lynn. Am I saying this right? And, uh, and the baby, uh, Kenzie. Did I get that right? Praise the Lord. Hey, Kenzie. Who's holding Kenzie? Judy? You want to raise? You want to stand up? Let us look at little Kenzie. Now, you guys, this is the grandson, Zach, right? Is the grandson of Don Hatton. Of course, everybody knows Don is Ken's brother. Uh, so this is uh, their family here. And Kenzie, welcome to Church Life. Come on, one more time. Let's give her a great God bless you. Amen. Hey, I'm so glad to have Zach and his family here. You know, uh, some may not know it when this church was built. Ken's brother, Don, was very instrumental in, in laying a lot of the wiring and some of the things for the video production. So some of his legacy still lives on right here in this church. And we certainly love the Hatton family. And uh, our family and their family, um, they go back um, a long ways. So anyway, it's just great to have you guys today. Glad you're here. Amen. And the others that are here, if I don't call you by name, it's just because I, I don't know to do that today. I haven't got a chance to get your name. But we're so glad. Let's give all of our guests a great God bless you today. Amen. We're glad you're here. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I'm uh, going to read some scripture here today. Somebody asked me, Pastor, what are you preaching on this morning? And I looked at him kind of funny, and I said, Well, you do know it's Thanksgiving week, right? You know. And they looked at me and said, Yeah, I kind of figured that. And I said, Well, we're going to talk about uh, something that I think will minister, hopefully, to each of us today. And uh, I want us to to focus in on what Paul says here. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 to the believers, both Jew and Gentiles, to the church. And also, in, as we get started in this, I want us to think in our hearts and our minds for a few moments today about, since it is Thanksgiving week, I want us to think about what were some of the things that Jesus gave thanks for? What were some of the things that Jesus was grateful for? First of all, can we all agree that a person's attitude will determine their altitude. In other words, how many is glad you can say, I have a grateful heart today? 
I'm sure everybody in this room, we have a grateful heart. Now, the opposite of being grateful, sometimes you'll hear uh, the word grumbling, complaining, unthankful. That's usually how it comes out. And that's not to say we don't all sometimes, you know, gripe or complain about something. The thing is about griping and complaining, I'm just going to throw this out and be done with it. Our complaints as a believer, as a Christian, even though we do, you know, we're human, we, we have some of those moments, but the, the rule should be that when we have something that we are frustrated by, you know, when I read my Bible, what I find, David had a lot of things he complained about, but he always took them to the Lord. He always took them to the Lord. And he's there. How many knows? He's always there to hear all that we've got to say to the Lord today. And so I think there's a key there for us to think about, you know, yeah, in those moments, you know, I have the Lord as a child. I have God I can turn to. He's, he's there with me in the good times, the bad times, the, the great times, the low times. And, and if I've got something I just need to, to lay at the altar, oh, thank God I can come to Abba Father. Hallelujah. And He hears my cries today. And I thank God for that. But I want to have a good attitude. I want to have a thankful heart, especially as a believer today. I, I, want, to, I want to be grateful today. I, not, I believe that's all of our intents today, not just on Thanksgiving Day, but as I said earlier, every day of the year as a believer. And we have much to be thankful for. I, I want us to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's get started there. And uh, I'm going to read uh, beginning at verse uh, 12 today. He says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. This is some good counsel that the writer is giving the church. Uh, as he's closing this uh, particular letter. He says, We're exhorting you, brethren, verse 14, warn them that are unruly. Uh, those that uh, are not doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, he says to uh, warn them, counsel them. He says, comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. How many knows this is some good counsel right here? Some good godly counsel. That's what he's given us. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, and both among yourselves and to all men. Now I've underlined the next three verses in this closing chapter in my Bible because I think they're so important. Probably one of the shortest verses in your Bible, verse 16. Let's say it together. Are you ready? Rejoice evermore. Or some translations say rejoice always. Verse 17. Let's say that one out loud. Are you ready? Pray without ceasing. I mean, that's some good counsel right there. Always have a prayerful attitude. Always have a prayerful spirit. Always he's reminding us, be Mindful to rejoice. Think on the good things. You know, one place the writer said, think on things that are good. Think on things that are lovely. Think on things that are of a pure report, a good report. Amen. Think on these things. And, and it will help us. Then he says, verse 18. Let's say it again together. You ready? In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Then he goes on, he says, quench not the Spirit. How many believes we ought to let the Holy Spirit have His way? Amen? Don't despise when the Spirit moves. Don't despise prophes prophesying. And then he says, let discernment do what He's supposed to do. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Oh, what good godly counsel. Man, my grandmother, she used to teach me verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Come on, can I get a witness right there? 
How many knows that's some good counsel in the 21st century here today? Amen. If we'll do all this, verse 23 says, In the very God of peace, He will sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, your soul and body, three parts of man, your whole spirit, your soul and body, will be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you go back and read the first part of the chapter, and even the chapter before, uh, the writer here is dealing with an issue at Thessalonica about those asking and inquiring about the coming of the Lord. When is the coming of the Lord going to happen? When is the day of the Lord going to take place? And, of course, First Thessalonians 4 and 16, Paul says, well, let me tell you the first things that are going to happen. There's first going to be a rapture of the church. Now, he doesn't use the word rapture, but he used the word a catching away or being caught away. Or he says it more like this, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. I mean, he knows he's going to shout with the trump of God, with the voice of the archangel. Watch this. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the air, in the clouds to ever be in the presence of the Lord. And then in the last verse he says, comfort one another with these words. Church, let us not ever lose the faith. He's coming back. The day of the Lord is at hand. Comfort one another. The rapture is going to take place. Can I get a witness here this morning? The day of the Lord. Oh, the Lord's not slack, Peter said, concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but he's only long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come unto life everlasting. The only reason it hasn't happened yet is it's not in God's timing. The church age isn't over just yet. There's still time to get prayed up, to get readied up, uh, to get your family saved, to get your loved ones in. Uh, there's still time for the prodigals to come home. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm thankful the day of the Lord is still a biblical doctrine, and it's still a spiritual truth. Uh, Jesus uh, is coming back again. Oh, somebody give the Lord a shout of praise today. Glory to God. He says, be careful. The times and the seasons. I'm talking about verse 1 of chapter 5. But uh, he says, you have no need that I write. You know perfectly the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Come on now. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travailed upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Amen. We know the rapture is going to happen. We've had... Bible studies on this, many of us recently, and we know there's tribulation, seven years that's coming, but we also know that as the church has been raptured away and the marriage supper of the Lamb has taken place, um, there's coming a time when Jesus isn't just going to meet the saints in the air. He's going to come and put his foot back on this earth uh, on top of Mount Olives. Uh, he's going to go into the closed gate of Jerusalem. All of Israel's going to see, suddenly, he's King of kings, he's Lord of of lords. Uh, there's going to be a praise offering uh, and a worship service take place. Uh, the mountains will shake. Uh, the earth will tremble. Oh, hallelujah. The devil won't be happy, but God uh, is going to receive uh, all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Oh, you ought to give him praise for it today. There's some birthing pains going on, he says. It's like a woman uh, who's with child. Uh, amen. The birthing pains. But listen, when this happens, there's going to be no escape of it. Uh, Eternity is going to come for the rich. Uh, it's going to come for the poor. It's going to come for every culture, every race, uh, every social economic status. Uh, let me tell you, if you do anything this Thanksgiving, let me tell you, it's time to get ready. Uh, get ready. Get ready. Get ready, get ready for the coming of the Lord this morning. Glory to God. I don't have time to be a, gl a grumbler and a complainer. 
There's too much at stake. Too much weighs in the balance. Some of it deals with my family. They don't need to see me grumbling and complaining in these last days. They need to see me worshiping greater, praising deeper. They need to hear the, oh, hallelujah, the songs of Zion coming from my lips and saying, oh, we know what's wrong with him. He knows that he's lifting up his head because he knows that the redemption of the Lord is drawing nigh. Woo! Come on, somebody just lift your hands and praise him a little bit. We got time to praise him. I'm not like some people. If only I had hope in this life, I'd be of all people miserable, Paul said. But, oh, thank God, I've got a hope of a life to come. This world is not my home. I'm only a pilgrim traveling through. Amen. You know why you never see anybody put up pictures in a motel room? Rearrange the furniture? At least I don't. Maybe you do. They don't go in there and start painting. That sound a little crazy? You know why? Because we know it's temporary. We're not going to be there too long. And I'm not saying don't paint your houses and don't have a good car and don't think about that. I'm not saying that today, but let's keep it in the right perspective, my friend. Some of the things I gripe about, some of the things that I grumble about, uh, it don't amount to anything anyway compared uh, to the eternity of God Almighty. I tell you what I ought to do. I ought to recognize uh, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through, but while I'm passing through, I'm going to pray praise you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, come on, church alive. He's worthy today. Well, Jesus said in John 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house, there's my permanent residence right there. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not true, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. That where I am, you might, I wish somebody help me today, you might be also. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I've got a home that's being prepared. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No wonder he begins the admonishments and he says, Rejoice always. The church ought to be rejoicing today. Pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. And in everything, oh, that's deep. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This word he uses here, the word thanks, so interesting. You know, Jesus thanks. Matthew 15, I'm not going to preach all these, but Matthew 15. How many knows, first of all, how many knows Jesus is our example today of the day? Matthew 15, verse 35 through 37. 
know, really this verse in Thess- Thessalonians is saying, no matter what your circumstances are, give thanks. It's temporary. And the thing that's amazing is that Jesus shows us both how to do this because he shows the way, but Jesus is also our example because Jesus is the way. So Jesus gave thanks many times, but one time Jesus speaks in Matthew 15, verse 35 through 37. You know the story. They were hungry. They needed food. And we find that in Matthew 15, he commanded the multitude, verse 35, to sit down on the ground. And he took seven loaves and the fishes. And what did Jesus do? He gave thanks. And he broke them, and he gave to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. Example one, Jesus gave thanks for food. Jesus gave thanks for natural provisions. Now, we know he is the manna from heaven, and he was teaching, and he gave them spiritual manna, spiritual food, but he also gave thanks for physical food. Now, what's unique about it is God took that which was natural and touched it by Jesus with the supernatural, and it multiplied and it fed the thousand. But my point is simply this. One example of Jesus is that Jesus recognized It is appropriate for us to thank God for the daily material, natural blessings in life. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On down he says, give us this day, what, our daily bread. I want us to be reminded today that we've got much to thank Him for in spite of anything or everything because as far as I can tell, God's still making a way in the natural and in the material for our lives today. Come on, let's give Him a round of praise today. I mean, He's glad for food on your table today. Clothes on your back. A vehicle of some kind in your driveway, perhaps. A roof over your head. Transportation. Hey, the health to be in the house of God today. Jesus gave thanks. What an example it is. Secondly, Jesus gave thanks in John 11, verse 41. To 43, for answers, answered prayer. Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. Martha met Jesus at the sepulchre. What do you mean take away the stone? He's already began to decay. There will be a strong odor if we take away the stone. But Jesus responded to Martha, Did I not say if thou wouldest only believe that you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And your Bible, my Bible reads that Jesus went to the tomb, the open tomb, and he lifted up his eyes and he prayed this prayer. Father, I thank Thee that You have heard me. Anybody glad the Father hears us today? And I know, Jesus says, You have heard me. 
always. You hear me always. But he's saying this now to his father. Because of the people around this tomb, this sepulcher, that they might believe that you have sent me. In other words, that they might know what I told Mary and Martha is true, that I'm more than just a miracle worker. I'm more than just a rabbi. I'm more than just a teacher. I am the resurrection and the life. So that they can bear witness of this, I pray out loud to you, Father, and I give you thanks. Hallelujah. Father, he says in verse 41, I thank you that you have heard me, but I'm praying this as a witness to any doubters or or anybody that may have a questioning spirit in their mind or in their heart. And then you know the story. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says, he that was dead came forth out of that cold tomb with grave clothes on and a napkin about his face. Can I tell you, he still the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in him, though he be dead, yet shall he live. That's why I pray without ceasing. Because I know every time I bend a knee to prayer, I have the ear of my heavenly Father. And through the blood of Jesus, I can claim my family for him. Oh, come on, somebody help me give him praise. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Glory to God. What an example. He gave thanks for this. Hallelujah. And Lazarus came forth. You know, I just feel like saying this. There's somebody here today, maybe more than one, but there's some things you've been praying about. And... You know, maybe you thought the time had come just to give that situation or that circumstance a proper burial and just leave it alone and walk away from that dream or that vision or that promise that you've been holding on for for so long. But I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost has sent me here today to tell you, don't you walk away from the promise God has given you. Don't you walk away from a place that seems like there's no end and it only looks like a place of burial because I come to remind you what you need to do is give thanks to the Father that He's already heard you. And even if you don't see it now, there's coming a day, hallelujah, the same Jesus that raised up Lazarus, He's the one that can resurrect any relationship, any ministry, any marriage, oh, hallelujah, any problem, any situation, Oh, how many is thankful today? He's the life giver. Hallelujah. And he's still full of resurrection power. Perhaps the greatest, as I close here, the greatest example of Jesus that I see for today is in Luke 22. Luke 22. You can read it sometime your studies, verse 14 through 20. See, the best place to see Jesus showing us the way to give thanks is when we look at and we see Jesus giving thanks for the cross of Calvary. Look at what he says. He says, verse 14, when they Iyer was come, he sat down. Apostles were with him. And he said to them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Now look at verse 17. And he took the cup. And what did Jesus do? He gave thanks. And he He uh, said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Verse 19, and he took the bread. 
And what did Jesus do? He gave thanks. And he broke it. And he gave it unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. I just want to give this to you quickly. This word thanks that he uses with the bread is a word, a little word study on this. What you find is the Greek word for this word thanks is a word called ikaristio. Now, just bear with me a minute. I don't want to throw anything uh, off here, but I just I want you to catch this word picture just for a moment. Ikaristo. The root word of ikaristo, you can see it right in the middle of that word, is charis. And the meaning of that is in our English language, the word grace. Everybody say grace. So when he says he gave thanks for this bread, which was broken, he was saying, Icaristio, which means grace. In other words, Jesus took this bread and he saw this bread, which was about to be broken. As he gave thanks for it, he saw it as a picture of grace. Hallelujah. He took this bread and he knew it to be the gift. And he gave thanks for it. But one other little thing within the Greek word for grace, charis, is its derivative. And that word, Greek word, is kara. And that word means joy. So we can say it like this. Charis equals grace. Icaristio equals thanksgiving. Kara equals joy. All derived from that same word of thanks in the Greek. He saw the bread. He saw the grace of God. There was thanksgiving. He broke it. He gave thanks for it. And then, I believe, he experienced joy in a moment of Passover. Hallelujah. How can you be so sure about this word picture today, Pastor? Well, if you go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, the Bible talks about how we're going to run our race. He says, wherefore, seeing also, you're compassed about a great cloud of witnesses. Let us also lay aside every way. And the sin which so doth easily beset us. Look at this. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith. Watch this. Who for the joy uh, that was set before him. What did he do? He endured the cross. Uh, he endured the despising and the shame. Uh, and he is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, Oh, hallelujah. What could make a person uh, feel like giving the Father praise uh, when they know that the cross is ahead, uh, when they know the blood is ahead, uh, when they know the suffering is ahead, uh, when they know the whipping post is ahead of them? Let me tell you, the only thing uh, that can cause a man to give thanks uh, is the cross, uh, is the joy. Uh, of the Lord uh, that gives you strength. Uh, I come to tell somebody here today the reason you're able to give him thanks uh, in everything uh, is because the joy uh, of the Lord uh, is your strength this morning. Uh, Whoa, hallelujah. The bread uh, is a picture of God's grace. I want you to stand with me all over this room. All that ahead of Jesus, yet it was for the joy that was before him. That's how he was able that night at Passover to break the bread. He knew what it represented, the grace of God. And yet, 
with all the suffering ahead of him, he still experienced the joy of the Father. And some of us in this room today, already you thought maybe another Thanksgiving been a rough season. Or maybe you've had a trial. Or maybe you've suffered some things. Maybe you've been tested. Maybe your faith has been tested. Maybe there's things at home. Maybe there's things with your children. I don't know today. But maybe it's left you wondering at times. Now, Lord, you're going to have to help me. Have a thanksgiving of praise. But no wonder Jesus said, this is how we run our race. Not looking at the things around us. The trials, the tests, the disappointments, the death, the fears, the foe. No, how do we run the race? Looking unto Jesus. Because he's the author. He's the beginning. And what Paul said to the church at Thessalonica is true. He's the beginning and he's the ending of our faith. I I come to tell somebody the reason you got a reason to give thanksgiving praise today is because in spite of the hell you may have been experiencing, you still got the joy of the Lord down on the inside of you. Jesus still reigns supreme today. And I come to tell you, Jesus is still King of Kings. He's still Lord of Lords. And the day of the Lord is still going to happen. It's just temporary. Turn to somebody and say, it's just temporary. Now tell them, keep your eyes on Jesus. And give Him the praise and the worship. He deserves, but let it spring forth out of the depths of Oh, the joy of knowing Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He's with us today. Hallelujah. Whoa, glory to God. I want everybody here today who will join me in this crescendo of worship for the next couple of two or three minutes. You say, well, I got some things that I'm, that's okay. I want you to come. Come from the back. Come from the side, the front. I think it's going to be important that all of us today step out from where we are and join in the front area of this church. Just stand and let us offer the Lord a thanksgiving praise today. Come on. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on. He's the joy of your life. He's the strength of your life. He's the keeper of our hope. Oh, hallelujah. If you need the Lord in your life today, guess what? He's here to come into your heart and come into your life. If you need to rededicate your heart to the Lord, guess what? He's here for you to rededicate your life to Him. If you need a healing with His stripes, you are healed this morning. If you need encouragement, He's your encourager this morning. Hallelujah. He broke the bread and He gave thanks. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Now, almost 100%. How many right now would just begin in your own way? Come on, if you want to lift your hands, lift your voice. Come on, this is personal. This is some personal time right here between you and the Lord. And just begin to love on Him and worship Him. Come on, Jesus was our example. He thanked Him. At the tomb of Lazarus, he thanked him. 
at the Passover in the upper room. He thanked Him. Oh, He thanked Him. Thank You, Lord. We worship You, Jesus. We thank You, Lord, for daily provisions. Oh, I thank you for the report of the Lord today. Your report says I'm healed. Your report says I'm filled. Your report says I have victory today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yeah, Found rest, oh, oh Lord. I give you thanks, come on, thanks, thanks, oh, for all you've done. I am so blessed. Oh, hallelujah. Cindy, can I pray with you? We're going to pray the Lord just heals our sister today. I mean, those God's greater than headaches today. Migraines, whatever they are, God knows today. I like the ministry team, the ladies. Come, let's let's come on by his stripes. We're healed, Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we just agree and we believe, Lord, through the atonement of your son Jesus. For the joy that was set before you. Jesus, you endured the suffering that we might not suffer, that we might be set free. Whoa, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I rebuke this today. I take authority over it, Lord. The blood of Jesus is against us. Jesus' mighty name. Oh, anybody else feel like you just want that special prayer today? I want you to stand right here if that's you. While the, tro- while the water's troubled, while the Lord's moving here. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. How many knows God's in all the details today? And He's a healer. Come on, let's pray for Kathy that the Lord will heal her body today by His stripes. Let's pray. Father, body, you said, Lord, in the word I preach today, you said, Lord, that we might be holy, sanctified, body, soul, and spirit. God, you're concerned with the spiritual, but also the physical. Father, I just anoint my sister in the name of Jesus. I take authority over the pain, the symptoms, the root cause. Pluck it up by its roots today, Father. 
Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, for the glory of God, your resurrection and your power. In the mighty name, in the mighty name, in the mighty name.